Hey everybody, this is Auntie Christine. I'm one of the moderators with the Dears Embroidery Legacy and we're gonna be doing a little excerpt today where you get to ask all the embroidery questions that are burning on your heart, but you're too afraid to ask. Today, we're gonna to be talking about embroidery pizza. I know it's a really hot topic for everybody, but we wanna talk about underlays and we're gonna use a pizza because that is the very best way to illustrate this. <laughs> Here, we have a pizza. It's done in a puzzle style where we decided to cut out the crust and then put something else in place of the crust. So let's cut that out and see how that works. Cut that. Oh, that's so yummy. What is it? Oh no, that's falling out. That's not working. My puzzle piece just does not work. Let's think of a better way to do this. Hey, we're back. So here's the question. Why do we do that? Why do we cut out stitches out of our pizza? Trying to save thread, trying to save time. You figure, oh, well, if I can just replace this and not layer it over the top, then I'm gonna have less stitches, but I hate to tell you, you're gonna have about the same amount of stitches if you stitch all the way through and then layer something on top. It's, it's crazy, but it's absolutely true. Tatami stitch, which is a brick, brick stitch, it's used by most people. It's a fill stitch that there is a brick and a brick and a brick, and then a brick that's altered, and then one that's altered, and one that's altered. It go outside and look at a brick building, and that is exactly what tatami stitch is. It's done that way because it mirrors tatami mats in Japan, the, the uh, bamboo mats. Tatami is an awesome, awesome stitch, but it does not like edges. It does not like little pieces of, of lettering. It does not like little antlers, feet, anything skinny and long, because it'll get to the end and it says, oh, I'm gonna stitch through here. Oh no, the end is coming. I guess I better change direction. And it does about four stitches and then it goes back the other direction. So if I have this cutout piece, this is my cutout piece right here. I cut this piece out, the tatami's gonna go, oh yeah, we're stitching along, we're stitching along, and then all of a sudden, oh, oh, I gotta go back. So it's gonna go back here, and it's gonna stitch like this all the way around, and each time it gets to that circle, and each time it gets to the edge, it has to do several stitches to get itself going in the back the other direction. So you end up with a lot of stitches, and around this join, you're, you're still gonna have a little bit of a gap, so a lot of times people will see a gap in their stitching registration problems. And if you had just made a solid square of tatami and then layered your little circle on top of it, like this, and put it on top like that, you save stitches and you have a nice firm base for the bottom. So, you know, this, I don't wanna eat this pizza. <laughs> I really don't, I could feed it to my husband, but I don't think he would like me very much that I did not make. I make, I make really cool pizza, I try. So we're gonna check out the pizza when it comes out of the oven, but um, just keep that in mind, the stitch count. If you're trying to save stitches, you're not saving yourself. Not only are you not saving stitches, you're not saving yourself on how nice that's gonna stitch out. The stitches are gonna butt up like this together and you're gonna get a gap. So um, we'll be right back when that's out of the oven. So here we have pizza dough. Uh, thank you, Linda Rayburn, for the pizza dough recipe. Uh, but I like to talk about pizza crust being an analogy for a good, a good <laughs> basis for embroidery. So let's get this in half. So you need a good basis for embroidery. That's why we put underlay under embroidery, so that you've got a crust holding up all of your toppings. If you cut into that crust like we did with this pizza, over here, you get this. You get these cutouts. And it doesn't really help. It's not gonna give you a good base. So what we're gonna think about embroidery is that it's a pizza crust and we're gonna layer our toppings on top. So if you're tempted to cut out holes to make letters, shapes, animals, whatever, really use some thought about whether or not you want to do that because you're compromising your crust. You're taking away your crust and putting something else in its place, which may not be as firm. So let's go ahead and 
we're going to pat this out. So this is our basically our embroidery. We've got our underlay, we've got the stabilizer on the other side, we've got everything that we need. And we're going to put this on our pan so we'll get ready to bake. So we're going to put our base down here. This is your fabric and your underlay. Okay, it's a beautiful, nice round circle. I don't have any cutouts in it. So now we're going to start laying things on top. And when we layer things on top, we've got to keep some things in mind. Okay, we got our sauce. Okay, we like a lot of sauce. So sauce may be your first layer. You're doing a patch and you're making a pizza and this might be the red part of your pizza. Okay, put a little more on there because we like a lot. Now, when you put a second layer on, we're not going to put two crusts on, we're only going to put one crust on. Otherwise, it's a calzone, it's no longer pizza. So when we put on our second layer, we want to make sure that we remove the underlay so that you're not doubling up, doubling up, doubling up. My crust here serves as a crust for all the stuff that's going to be above it. So we want to make sure that we keep that in mind and as you're adding things on top, you're not going to put underlays under those because you've already got the support of the crust underneath. So we're going to put cheese on. Let me stop this for one second and we're going to get some cheesy out and I'll be right back. So you're embroidering a pizza, you got your crust. That's going to be your fabric, your stabilizer, and your underlay. It's going to hold up everything on top of it. We put some sauce on, but we took the underlay out from under the sauce. I'm going to put some cheese on. I'm going to take the underlay out from that too. So here we're putting on our cheese. So we're going to put lots of cheese on because we like lots of cheese. But we took the underlay out from under this cheese also. So now I've got a layer of crust, a layer of sauce, a layer of cheese. I have four layers of embroidery. I've got an under layer with the crust. I got the embroidery. I got the sauce layer with no underlay. Got the cheese layer. And now we're going to put on our toppings. We got sausage. We got bacon. We're going to put these on and these also do not require underlay and don't be tempted to try to put tons of detail on top of detail on top of detail. You really want to make sure that you're taking it easy on the on the stitch density so you can use running stitch you can use triple stitch for some of the fine details don't try to make it a big blob on top of a blob otherwise we're going to have such a thick pizza it'll never bake so we're going to put a little bit more goodies on this and then that's going to go in the oven so now you can see i've got my pizza but it seems loaded and as it should be but it's not overloaded. I don't have a lot of dense stitches. So let's put that in the oven. We're gonna check it in just a bit. Hey everybody, just a little shout out to Chicago style pizza. When I was a kid, we ate at a place called Uno Pizzeria in Chicago and it was fantastic, but it was upside down. So that's cheese and meat with the goodies. And we'll put some, we got some basil from outside. We're going to throw that in and then we're going to put the sauce on the top. I know it sounds crazy, but it's really, really, really good. And this is a very cakey dough. So even if we mix up our embroidery, we can still use the same theory. I didn't do this in the same order as the other one, but I'm still going to use the same theory. I've got my crust. I have my cheese layer, but I removed my underlay. I have my meats and my toppings, but I don't have any underlay in the bed. I'm throwing a bunch of sauce on the top but I'm not putting an underlay under this. Now granted, there are gonna be times when you have to go outside this rule, but if you're just starting or you're getting an idea of how you want to, how you want to uh, embroider, it's a, good, it's a good rule of thumb to have in mind. I'm gonna put a little extra cheese on because you can't leave just that amount of cheese in the bag. It's got it all. So we're going to put that on. We're going to put this as oregano out of, the, out of the garden. We're going to throw that on there. We're going to put it in the oven. We're going to be back in just one second, and we're going to talk about what we did and show you what we made. Hey, everybody. We're back. And this is our embroidery legacy embroidery pizza. Uh, it turned out pretty good. It looks good. And um, we're going to eat it in a sec. But let's just review what 
we talked about the crust is your fabric, your stabilizer, and your underlay. Everything you put on top of that, all your toppings, sauce, cheese, and all the goodies. Remove the underlay. There are some exceptions where this does not apply, but for the rule of thumb, don't try to cut out or you're going to end up with the pizza that's gone. It's been eaten. We'll just take this part of the pizza because this is what we're going to end up with. You can have this, you know, or you can have this. So, hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, always ask them in the group. Um, any kind of hatch questions, ask them in the hatch facts questions. And uh, any kind of general embroidery discussions, you can ask them in me or any of the other moderators in the Digitizing Made Easy group. Hope to see you there. Have fun.